This is your midterm review of the chord analysis, figure base, and cadences. Uh, remember that you might get this in the form like this, or you might get this as part of analyzing him or something like that, a chorale. Um, I apologize that this is a bad printout. But we talked about that in our Zoom meeting. So you're reviewing yours, and hopefully you've written out the notes so that you can see them better. Um, I'm just going to go through and do this. Uh, so these are all in minor because you want to practice getting good at minor, right? Um, I'm in E minor here, and I see a B chord right there, B, D sharp, B, it's incomplete, but it's still a B chord, and that's five right there. This makes me think this is going to be a Phrygian cadence, because I see this half step down into there, right? Leso, right there. Um, and, you know, it's certainly a half cadence, but if we look here, this should be an A chord, A, C, E, in first inversion, like that. So this is a Phrygian cadence, right? Right there, the special cadence that happens in the Baroque period, where the four chord is in minor and it goes down by half step to the five chord. Right there. Okay, here I am in F. Um, so I see here that I have a C chord, C, E natural, and then G and C. This is five. Unless this is a Phrygian cadence and it doesn't look like that because of there, it really doesn't matter what this is. This is a half cadence, but we do need to analyze the chords for points uh, and figure base. So I'm seeing an F, a C, an A flat, and an F. And then this is just voice exchange right there, right? It's just our, what we've been doing in class. And so um, this is just a one chord right there. No figure base to speak of because it's in root position, half cadence, okay? Right here, uh, we're in G minor. I've got to say, by the way, that these are um, a couple years old. It's possible when I wrote them at the time I was rushed and there's a mistake. If that happened, I apologize. I'll correct it here, but I, I don't know that for a fact, but if it happens, it happens. So, okay, I'm G minor. My last chord here is an E flat, a G, a G, and a B flat. That's a sixth chord right there. It's major because we're in minor key. This is going to be a deceptive cadence because that's the only way we're going to end on a six unless we change the key or something like that, which means that this is probably a five chord. Five going to six is the most common deceptive cadence. So there's my D, A, F sharp, and C. That's a five, and it's a seventh chord in root position. So there I go. This is a C, a C, an A, and an E. So this is an A chord right there, right? That's my E flat, so that's my two. And it's it doesn't have a seventh on it. It's just A, C, C, E flat. But it is in first inversion, and it is diminished. So oh, what I find with a lot of students preparing here is that... Um, that you've learned your cadences really, really well, and um, and you make mistakes on the the old skills because they're they're many and varied, and it's a lot easy to make a mistake somewhere. So anyhow, okay, could be the quality of the chord or something like that. Could be the figure base, right? All right down here, B flat minor, yay five flats. Um, this is a B flat right there, and a B flat and a an F and a D. This looks like a one chord. Looks like it's in root position, but this is not root on top. So unless this is a plagal cadence, and I doubt it because we did the first one and it was plagal in, in our class, right? This is going to be probably some kind of imperfect authentic cadence, right? So I'm, I'm going to guess it's an authentic cadence. It could be, you know, it can't be, it can't be perfect because there's no uh, root on top as well. But let's just check this out for a minute. There's a, my leading tone, A, right? There's C. There's F and there's E flat. So this is an F, A, C, E flat. That's a five chord, right? It's major dominant, right? Or major minor, depending on what textbook you're using. And it's going to be third in the bass. So the figured bass is six, five. And it is indeed an imperfect authentic cadence. If I'm a betting man, then I, I'm going to bet this is a perfect authentic cadence just because we haven't seen one yet. But, but who knows? Who knows, right? I'm in the key of D minor. There's my D chord, D, F, A, D. That's a one chord right there. Right. This is root position and root position. Uh, I'm betting that this is a PAC just because we haven't seen one yet and I have root position with root on top. I look here for a five chord. That would be an A. So A, C sharp, A, E. No seventh. It's just a plain five chord in root position. So it's definitely a perfect authentic cadence. Right. This one right here is a D, F, A, D. So this is a one chord. Oops one right there but the third's in the base so there we go like that. okay and that's it right there 
like I said, I think, I think what's going to happen probably for your midterm is that you'll see something like this very much in a, like a pre-made corral, somebody's hymn or something like that. And, you know, every couple measures it'll go and there'll be a cadence. The difference here is that uh, because corrals are in root, uh, sorry, usually quarter notes moving along, you'll have twice as many chords to analyze because it'll go like one, two, three, four, one, two, cadence. And so there's, you know, six, seven chords there to do. Uh, on the happy side, once you've figured out the key, it'll be all in that key, probably, right? If not, I'll, I'll let you know and mark that. So your knowledge of a key will be easier. The other thing also is that most chorales tended to not be, especially like Protestant hymns, tended to not be so difficult or in, in horrible keys. So you'll probably find something that's in a friendly key. You figure out what all the chords are and their qualities, and then you go to town, all right? So there's that. Um, you should also be able to define these. So if I said to you, what's the difference between an imperfect authentic cadence and a perfect authentic cadence, or what's the difference between a phrygian cadence and a half cadence, what's a deceptive cadence, what's a plagal cadence, you should be able to, to quickly define them, right? Okay, and there you go, okay?